it's been a very exciting morning, as you might expect. Uh, I'm thrilled that you guys are clearly as interested in and as excited by uh, Warlord era Chinese pistols as I am. Uh, so we blew past our basic standard funding goal uh, in right about one hour, and we have since uh, blasted through three stretch goals this morning. We tried to stretch them out a little bit so that we maybe wouldn't do this again, but it happened again. Uh, so we have, at the time of this recording, we have passed $250,000 in funding, which is sweet. Um, and it has unlocked, as I said, several stretch goals for us. So I want to go over those briefly. Um, first off, we have unlocked spine hubs, which is cool. I was hoping we would get that. I really like the look of spine hubs. I think they make a book look a bit more distinguished and sort of old-fashioned vintage-y, which I really enjoy. So we will have that. We will also have gilding. Uh, we were always going to have gilding for the collector's editions of the books, but uh, we have now broken through the stretch goal to put that on all the books. So both the retail cover and the purple Kickstarter only cover, uh, the standard editions, the signed editions, and the collector editions will all have uh, gold uh, gilding on the top, front, and bottom, the outside of all the pages. That's really cool. That'll make it look very nice, just like our previous books on French and British rifles. Um, we have also unlocked the first of our content-related stretch goals. This is a Warlord profile uh, about, well, we've got a handful of these as stretch goals. We'll see how many of them uh, we actually make that I have to write. Uh, the first one is about, uh, if I'm going to go for this, I'm going to try it. My Chinese pronunciation is probably worse than most of my other pronunciations, but uh, Don Chi Hui, uh, who is, was one of the early warlords, and he's a really good example of someone whose uh, fortunes could change very quickly during this period. So uh, this particular fellow uh, joined the military, basically started his military career at the age of 16, uh, was in the National Chinese Army, ended up in the Beiyang Army, which was the, the reformed new army system. 1889-1890 uh, he actually was sent abroad to study in Germany, study military science, and his specialty was artillery, and he actually spent some time at the Krupp factory studying artillery in Germany. Came back um, and slowly advanced through the ranks of the Chinese military. He ended up being a close ally of Yuan Shikai, uh, who was the first, basically the first president, turned, tried to become the new emperor of China. Uh, when he died, uh, Duan became, uh, was elected premier of the country, uh, which is great. Uh, he declared war on Europe. Uh, well, he declared war on half of Europe, the, the central powers in Europe, with the hopes of um, basically gaining some advantages, gaining some territory, some German concessions that had been made in China, uh, getting those back by becoming part of the Entente powers in the First World War. Uh, then decided not to uh, disband the army after World War I, the army that had been set up to go fight in Europe, which didn't actually really go fight in Europe, uh, this led to one of the very first major warlord uh, battles in 1920, one of the, the warlord wars, where he was defeated and basically chucked out of power, never to return again. So some of these warlords have fates like that. They get very powerful and then, you know, very unpowerful very quickly. Some of them managed to survive for surprisingly long periods of time during what was a very chaotic period. Anyway, um, we'll have a couple more stretch goals for other Warlord profiles coming up, and we'll see how many of those make it into the book. Um, we also, every time we break through a stretch goal, we're unlocking an, the next one uh, to keep them visible. So you can see what we've got coming now. We also have a section on revolvers coming up. That'll be pretty cool if we uh, break that one. So um, that's where we are at the time of this filming. Thank you all very much for the interest in making this happen. There are a couple of specific questions that I would like to address here that have come up. One is about the physical book size. Some of you have noticed that uh, Pistols of the Warlords is not the same, uh, not exactly the same dimensions as our previous books. However, we very specifically made it the same height as Chassepot de Famas and Thornycroft de SA-80. So if you line all the head stamp book up, books up on a bookshelf, they're all nice and even, and they will fit together beautifully. However, we made Pistols of the Warlords a deeper book uh, in, well, depth, I suppose. Uh, and we did that for artistic reasons. We realized what we're trying to do is show handguns at very high resolution. These pictures are virtually all larger than life size, except for some of the really huge pistols. 
And if we have a book set up like this, uh, we kind of have to do pistols vertically. We really wanted to do them horizontally, so we took our, our book dimensions and stretched them out um, to better present our, our photography. So uh, that's why we made that choice on the book size, and like I said, it will still fit very nicely on a bookshelf even with all of our other titles. Uh, secondly, we had a couple people asking about how to get some of the add-ons. Things like Dolph Goldsmith's Arming the Dragon monograph, the poster, bookmarks, that sort of thing. Well, as soon as you, once you make a pledge, the next page that Kickstarter takes you to is a page of add-ons, where it lists all of the available add-ons, and you can choose some, none, or all of them, whatever you'd like to add on to your pledge. So that's where you can pick up bookmarks, extra Ex Libris labels, um, well, Ex Libris labels. I should point out we have a stretch goal for including an Ex Libris with every single book. Uh, that is now visible. If we make it, we'll include one with every book. If you only wanted one and you've already pledged for an Ex Libris label as an add-on, you can always go back and, and remove that from your pledge. If you want more, you can go in and add more. That's It's nice that uh, Kickstarter has added this add-on functionality now. Um, anyway, uh, that add-on section is where you can put in anything there that you'd like, including, by the way, copies of our previous books. So if you don't have Chassepot de Famas, or if you don't have Thornycroft SA80, and you would like those, they are also available as add-ons for this Kickstarter. Just do be aware that if you choose one of those, um, it will ship at the same time as your Pistols of the Warlords order. Um, if you want to order separately, we can ship the previous books earlier because, well, as soon as we have Charles Poe back in stock, uh, but you will pay two separate shipping charges if we're shipping the books as two separate packages. Anyway, now this is getting boring um, with all the little nitpicky details, so uh, I will close this out. Thank you guys very much for all the interest. I'm really excited to be able to get these books printed. Get them into your hands. It's a fascinating subject and it has been a lot of fun to put together this book.